We are all within the black cube matrix. You're probably wondering, what are these black cubes? What do they symbolize? Why are they in every major city around the world? I'm here to tell you that this black cube represents the cube of Saturn, the very cube found on the North Pole of Saturn. The truth is far stranger than you might believe. In the occult realm, Saturn is known as Father Time, and its symbology is evident everywhere you look. The planets aren't what you believe they are, they're not what you've been told. Behind these seven energies that we call planets, there lies a far deeper meaning. The elites in power seem to worship Saturn, given that their symbols are pervasive. Take Michael Jackson's album cover, for instance. It features the word escape, set against Saturn's rings. What do you think he's trying to tell us? Venture into the world's secrets, and you'll find a web of mysteries and esoteric knowledge hidden in plain sight. The Black Cube Matrix is one such enigma. The symbols are everywhere, from public sculptures in major cities to covert emblems in pop culture. Yet, only the initiated recognize them. When one gazes upon the prominent structures in places such as New York, London, and Tokyo, the recurrent theme of the Black Cube emerges, standing tall and unwavering. To the untrained eye, they might appear as mere architectural choices, but to those who are attuned to the esoteric world, it symbolizes a hidden truth. The Cube of Saturn, located on the north pole of the planet, is the very Black Cube that you see represented across our world. The cube is not merely a geometric shape, it is an emblem of power, an indicator of knowledge and dominion, and the nexus of the ancient and the modern. To understand this connection, one must delve into the occult significance of Saturn. Known in esoteric circles as Father Time, Saturn is depicted with his scythe, representing both creation and destruction. While many in the contemporary world see planets as mere celestial bodies, the occult knows them as energies, forces, and deities. Saturn is not just a planet, it is an embodiment of time, discipline, and cycles. But why the obsession with Saturn? The elite powers that be understand the significance of the energies these celestial bodies hold. They believe that by worshipping Saturn and tapping into its energy, they can harness its power. Evidence of this can be found in numerous symbols and emblems, corporate logos, movies, music albums, and even fashion. They're not simply representations, they're talismans. Take, for instance, Michael Jackson's album, Escape. The title itself implies a desire to break free, but what's more intriguing are the Saturn rings clearly depicted on the cover. Is it merely an aesthetic choice, or was the King of Pop subtly communicating a deeper message, a cry for liberation from the very matrix we're discussing? And Michael Jackson isn't the only one. Numerous artists, filmmakers, and writers have woven Saturnian symbolism into their works, nudging the aware viewer towards a greater truth. However, to say that space isn't real would be an oversimplification. What's meant by this is that our understanding of space, inculcated by mainstream narratives, is limited and skewed. The cosmos is not just a vast emptiness dotted with celestial bodies, it's a canvas of energies, stories, and truths waiting to be deciphered. Let's unravel the significance of the seven energies we term planets. In the occult world, the number seven holds immense significance. There are seven chakras, seven ancient wonders of the world, and seven deadly sins. These planets are not just wandering celestial objects, they are the embodiment of seven fundamental energies that influence our world. The elites recognize this. Their obsession with these energies, especially Saturn, is not mere superstition. It's an understanding of the interconnectedness of the universe. Mercury, for instance, emits a unique frequency that influences quantum vibrations in our own atomic structures. These frequencies don't just carry messages, they resonate on a subatomic level, subtly altering electron behaviors, linking neural pathways, and affecting the very essence of thought transference. Venus, bathed in its radiant glow, emanates particle waves that interact with the magnetism of our world. Its pole affects more than just gravitational tides, 
It exerts force on the elemental magnetite found within living organisms, influencing biological attractions and the interconnected dance of life itself. Mars, with its iron-rich soil, releases a distinct cosmic radiation. This energy, detectable by the most sensitive of instruments, seems to stimulate our primal instincts. It is speculated that these radiations affect our adrenaline production and other biochemical pathways, evoking that innate drive within us. Jupiter, the colossal force in our solar system, emits a potent energy field that affects the spin of electrons in our environment. This spin manipulation, according to esoteric physicists, might be linked to the expansive and abundant feelings associated with this great planet. Saturn's ring system, beyond its visible beauty, scatters charged particles throughout its vicinity. These particles, when they interact with Earth's own magnetic field, can influence our perception of time and the cyclical nature of our existence. Uranus, with its off-kilter axis, emits asymmetrical energy waves that challenge and disrupt the standard quantum patterns. This might be why, during specific Uranian alignments, there are noticeable shifts in innovation and revolutionary thinking. Neptune, the mystic of our solar system, sends forth subsonic frequencies. These frequencies are believed to resonate with our pineal gland, often called the third eye, potentially opening pathways to deeper realms of consciousness. When we shift our perspective from the mystical to the subatomic, we realize that the planets offer more than just symbolic energy. They engage with us on a quantum level, altering the very fabric of our being, intertwining science with the arcane, revealing the occult truths of our cosmos. There's an ancient saying, as above, so below. This age-old principle, echoing through the corridors of hermetic traditions, encapsulates the idea that our vast cosmos with its myriad patterns mirrors the intricate events on Earth. Such is the essence of the Black Cube and Saturnian energies, interweaving celestial and terrestrial realms, hinting at forces that shape not just our spiritual journey, but even pragmatic aspects of our lives, like our financial markets. J.P. Morgan, the titan financier, was no stranger to these connections. Many recall his statement, Millionaires don't use astrology, billionaires do. Far from a casual remark, it reveals Morgan's genuine belief in the ties between planetary movements and market ebbs and flows. He leaned on astrologers, tapping into age-old wisdom to strategize in business, drawing connections from the stars to Wall Street. Speaking of the stars, while many of us have dabbled in traditional astrology, I recently stumbled upon a program that dives into moon readings. Its simplicity belies its accuracy. Without exaggerating, its result felt almost uncannily on point. It makes one wonder about the depths of celestial influence. For the curious among you, there's a link in the description, but go there after watching this video. Now, Raymond Merriman. A stalwart in financial astrology today brings ancient practices to contemporary tables. With an impressive career spanning decades, Merriman's work bridges the celestial with the economic, gaining nods of respect even from skeptics. Taking a step back, the overarching narrative is hard to ignore. The Black Cube Matrix and Saturnian energy are not mere esoteric symbols. They rippled through our society, influencing everything from our buildings to our bank accounts. Morgan's legacy is proof that some elite figures don't just understand these connections, they harness them. In conclusion, for those with eyes to see and ears to hear, the universe whispers its secrets. Beyond just spiritual introspection, these cosmic energies seep into our daily grind. Peering beyond the surface, there is a vast tapestry of interconnectedness waiting for us to unravel its mysteries. It's an invitation, urging us to look up, connect the dots, and harness the boundless. The moon has long stood as a beacon, casting its silvery light across cultures, religions, and secret societies. Its pull reaches not just the ocean's tides, but seeps into the human psyche and our physiological rhythms. An ancient power, 
it is deeply woven into the fabric of our beliefs. Consider menstruation, or moonstruation, a monthly cycle echoing the moon's own wax and wane. This phenomenon, which happens exclusively during the fertile years, held symbolic potency in bygone cultures. The menstrual blood, often perceived with a mix of awe and trepidation, has perhaps influenced the use of red ochre by our forefathers. Even today, rituals and practices surrounding menstruation persist, reflecting age-old beliefs. This reverence for the menstrual cycle might be why events like the Witch's Sabbath were intricately linked to lunar phases, painting the moon in strokes of mystery and reverence. Delve deeper, and the Sabbath's significance becomes even clearer. Once the heart rest of the moon, this day was co-opted by the Jews and later the Christians, shifting it towards a more solar and masculine deity. This transition also brought about a shift from the matriarchal 13-month lunar calendar, with its symbolic 13 zodiac houses, to the solar 12-month structure. A subtle nuance, but these 12 houses are evocative of the 12 zodiac signs, a potent parallel to Jesus and his 12 disciples, hidden figures in the dance of celestial worship. Astrotheology, or the theology of stars, is the ancient study of these celestial patterns and their divine implications. The concealed number 13, the hidden month, is a testament to the Earth Mother's power and significance. It's in the very fabric of religious foundations, Christ as the Sun, Mary's ties to the Moon, and the Twelve Disciples as the Zodiac. This lunar influence extends to the deities worshipped across cultures, Aphrodite, Ishtar, Isis. While their names may differ due to regional nuances, they are essentially manifestations of the same energy, the Gnostic Sophia, or Wisdom. Secret societies have been the guardians of these lunar secrets, sheltering them through ages, even as they skirmished or assimilated with dominant solar cults. The profound impact of the moon on human psychology and physiology isn't just a stuff of legends. Terms like lunatic, drawn from the moon, underscore this connection. Historical data reveals patterns linked to lunar cycles, higher incidents of kleptomania, arson, and even driving mishaps during full moons. Rituals such as the Jewish Passover and the Christian Easter are scheduled around lunar events, hinting at the moon's profound influence on our traditions. Intriguingly, the lunar cycle also appears to have sway over births. A 1948-1957 New York study of 500,000 births indicated more births during a waning moon. Even in remote Germany, births seemed to align with high tides as the moon passed overhead. Eugen Jonas in the 1960s delved into the lunar influences on ovulation, boosting contraception's effectiveness astonishingly. However, it isn't just humans that are impacted. Frank Brown's groundbreaking research unveiled that creatures ranging from oysters to rats are governed by lunar cycles. Despite initial skepticism from the scientific community, Brown's findings illuminated the omnipresent lunar influence on Earth's inhabitants. In the dance of cosmic bodies, the ancients discerned gods shaping their destinies. Today, as we unravel the moon's mysteries, we find a tapestry of secrets where each thread holds a story of reverence, power, and balance. The celestial realm, a vast expanse where the Saturn, the Moon, and countless other bodies reside, seems most active under the cloak of night. This nocturnal setting, deep and inscrutable, offers a backdrop against which the dance of these celestial bodies is most vivid. The Saturnine chronology, the moon's enigmatic waltz, and even the silent whisper of stars, all of these narratives unfold primarily in the silent hours of the dark. This preponderance of celestial activity at night prompts us to ponder, is there an inherent darkness or shadow in these events and energies? The ancient pagan traditions, after all, were deeply connected with night. They revered the moon and other celestial bodies, drawing energy and power from the cosmos during nighttime rituals and ceremonies. This association with the pagan energies, often misunderstood or even feared in various cultures, 
raises questions about the nature of the forces we tap into when we attune ourselves to the cosmos. However, to hastily equate the night and its mysteries with something sinister would be a gross oversimplification. The universe, in all its vastness, holds a balance. Just as there's day, there's night. For every right, there's left. This duality is inherent in the very fabric of existence. It's a reminder that all energies, be they from the sun or the farthest star, emanate from the same divine source. I choose to believe that everything, every planet, star, and nebula is an expression of the divine. If we view the cosmos through this lens, then every nocturnal mystery becomes a chapter in a grand tale written by the hands of the creator. This perspective invites us to love and embrace both the light of day and the secrets of night, understanding that they are two sides of the same cosmic coin. In the end, as we peer into the depths of the universe, seeking understanding and connection, it's essential to approach these mysteries with an open heart. For in the balance of day and night, right and left, light and shadow, we find the true essence of the cosmos, a symphony of energies that, while varied in nature, originate from the same divine source. This realization is perhaps the most profound secret of all.